welcome back to another edition of Just an Opinion. Today I'm continuing my sports series and I'm going to rank my top seven college sports movies. Some of these flicks don't necessarily take place in a college setting, but feature young adult characters looking to go professional or towards the Olympics. Our protagonists have made it this far in their athletic career, but these are the quintessential years that will determine whether it will go further or not. They all encounter many struggles along the way, including injuries, addiction, and some worldly issues that are beyond anyone's control. But these are the defining years, and many learn more about themselves even beyond the athletic field. Number seven is Personal Best. Mariel Hemingway plays Chris, a track and field athlete vying to make the 1980s Olympic team. Along the way, she finds a mentor figure in Tori, which develops into a romantic relationship. Please don't, please don't let me go. This film is very progressive for its time thematically, but also the social awareness of everything that was going on at the time. By this I mean that the US boycotted the 1980s Olympics, so the climax of the film is a competition to determine who would have been on the US Olympic team. The film stylizes all of the events involved in the pantathlon, showcasing the different training techniques and approaches. The high jump is a masochist event. It always ends on failure. Just when you're really getting whipped, you reach that event that calls for reckless abandon. You have to throw yourself through the air as fast and as far as you can. The audience really gets an understanding of the intensity involved, but also the disappointment when these women don't have the opportunity to compete at the world level. Number six is Foxcatcher. The best word to describe this film is bizarre, but it's a true story. The focus being an elite and affluent amateur wrestling school training future teams for world competitions and the Olympics. Steve Carell masterfully plays millionaire and wrestling enthusiast John DuPont. When we fail to honor that we should be honored, it's a problem. It's canary in a coal mine. You bird watch. His performance blurring the lines between eccentric and just plain scary. Thematically, the tone is just uncomfortable. Despite the wealth of DuPont, these wrestlers don't exactly have glamorous lives when they're in training. Yeah. Right here, Coach. What's up? Why is there nobody in the gym? What do you mean? It's almost noon. There's nobody in there. Are you okay? You ungrateful ape. If you know the facts, you're aware that this story does not end well. Sometimes it's almost more suspenseful when you know a picture is going to end tragically. Number five is Peaceful Warrior. Definitely the most spiritual movie on this list. Athletic talent can sometimes lead to ego and reckless behavior. In this story, gymnast Dan feels he's on a path towards the Olympics and a national championship. While he feels he's above the need for a mentor figure, he does proceed with a man he dubs Socrates. Now he has some questionable teaching methods, but it's all an effort to keep Dan grounded and spiritually centered. I totally forgot about this. Now I get this thing at the gym. It's pretty important. I'll make this quick. Sure. Ah! You were in a hurry. So you pushed me off the bridge? I emptied your mind. You what? I emptied no, your mind. No, you didn't. You threw me into the river. And while you were falling, tell me, Dan, what were you thinking about? I don't know. But Dan's world is unfortunately shattered after a motorcycle accident. Recovery deemed as impossible. The film becomes very philosophical at this point, showing how sometimes a person's spirit cannot be broken regardless of the physical state. And you told me that you wanted me to train again. I told you a warrior does what he loves. And this is what I love! Chasing the oak. 
living in fear that you might fail? That's what you love about it? No. This is a true story. And Dan evolved these teachings of his mentor writing several books on his credo. Number four is Prefontaine. This biographical film, named after the title character, covers the career of the cross-country running sensation. While brash and cocky, Pre craved the spotlight, but he also earned it with his exceptional ability. Well, I can run better, a lot better. But I need better competition to do it. Well, what are we going to say? Wait a minute, Pre. What about the end, though? I mean, you must have had doubts when Bjorklund and Berkeley came at you like that. Never. What, I ran too flat for the last two laps? Let me tell you something. Nobody, nobody's going to outkick me. What are your racing plans? His path was always leading towards the Olympic Games, but tragedy overshadowed this in 1972 with a terrorist attack. The film shifts in tone in the second act with Pre more grounded and passionate. It also turns political, since you see that amateur restrictions on athletes basically had them living in poverty. Living here on food stamps, begging for crumbs from the ATU? I never protested. I always saluted the flag. But what about it, Montreal? Right now, I feel like saying to hell with Montreal. To hell with, with love a country. I'm looking out for me. But he combats these rules and makes an impact for future generations. I do also recommend the film Without Limits, which also covers the career of Prefontaine. It's slightly different and was released around the same time. Number three is Youngblood. This character-driven hockey piece stars Rob Lowe as the title character. He decides to go for AAA hockey for a possible shot at the pros someday. This film's simplicity is really its strength. You shouldn't expect too much substance to the story. It's just fun. <laughs> is the pre-point break pair of Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves. Loaded with training montages and awesome hockey scenes, you're in for a real treat. lies within both the romantic escapades of Lowe, dating the coach's daughter, but also when he learns to conquer his fears and have one final face-off with the league's most notorious bully. Let's go, pretty boy. Let's go. This flick is a sweet dose of 1980s nostalgia complete with a rockin' soundtrack, and you know that makes this guy happy. Number two is The Program. This was the ultimate in-your-face sports movie. We start with a decent college football team dead set on making a bowl game. Story-wise, there's a gamut of temptation each player faces including alcoholism, steroids, and bribes from the alumni. Despite their hyper-masculine exteriors though, each teammate seems to be playing for a different, more personal reason. Dad? No, no, I was just calling because um, Michigan game's on TV tomorrow and I thought you might want to watch it. Broke? Well, can't you go over to Jackie B's and watch it with Jerry? Oh. There's a healthy balance between the players' struggles and pure adrenaline pumping scenes. Kane, back to pass. Can't find anybody. Gets away. Gonna run it himself. At the 10, 5. Touchdown, ESU. On a side note, this film was notorious for a scene that was eventually deleted due to some morons actually duplicating what they saw. Urban Legend says this scene was destroyed with no existing footage. And I was actually told this in a face-to-face -face conversation I had with director David Ward. However, for what it's worth, the scene does exist in pristine quality, and it's on YouTube if you want to check it out. Yeah. 
Hey, bud, they're talking about how good I am under pressure. Joe, don't be an asshole. What if somebody drifts or crosses the line to pass? You can't take the heat off the highway. Shit. Come on, they'll hit me first. Stop to move back to the one. Number one is Rudy. This is one of the biggest underdog stories in film history. Sean Astin shines as the title character who dreamed of playing for the Fighting Irish at Notre Dame. His only goal was to help his team altruistically, with no aspirations of fame for himself. Don't you understand, man? If you don't cool it out there, you're going to end up getting yourself killed. If I cool it, I won't be helping you guys get ready for the next week's games. Got it? The audience goes on the journey with him, with its very low points, but also his moments of triumph. You've been accepted as the first of us. <laughs> a bit rough around the edges, Rudy does win over nearly everyone he meets with his giant heart and his work ethic. But sometimes his obsession with the team clouds his judgments of other success he's achieved. You're five feet nothing, a hundred and nothing, and you got hardly a speck of athletic ability. And you hung in with the best college football team in the land for two years. And you're also going to walk out of here with a degree from the University of Notre Dame. In this lifetime, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody except yourself. And after what you've gone through, if you haven't done that by now, it ain't going to never happen. I would almost categorize this as a sports movie allegory. It's become a go-to feature for anyone that was told they weren't good enough to make whatever team they were trying for. Thank you so much for watching and please do leave a comment. I'll be back soon, but this time I'm going to rank my top professional sports movies. I hope you check it out. Oh,